Over the years, I've spent many hours looking at how I can improve and upgrade my 3D printers. But then suddenly I stumbled across a product that broadened my perspective. Why am I wasting my time and money upgrading parts for printers of a mediocre, second-rate quality? So I dug a little deeper and discovered a 3D printing manufacturer that not only supplies the very best quality, but the foresight for the end-user choice of hardware. Print bed sizes between 300 and 500 centimeters and offering both Core XY and Cartesian style printers. This company is ushering in a new era of addictive manufacturing. With linear rails and precision parts, these options will very much boil down to your needs for cost, convenience and community. And with that community, it's allowed for infinitely more customization of all options for you to exploit and enjoy, which includes the EVA hot end mount, which allows you to use your favorite style of hot end and extruder. So if your prints are all about quality, speed, time saving, and low to no failures, this could be the next 3D printer for you. And the name? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen, and I'm Sam Prentice back once again making them happen. And Happy New Year to you all. 2021, we're 305 days into lockdown, so if you haven't already started pulling your hair out and going stir crazy, I hope that you maybe will do one little thing for me. Hit that subscribe button, because I'm, as I get on to the next milestone, I'm going to be giving some giveaways. I've got some printers to give away. I've got all sorts of stuff going on, but obviously, you know, you've got to help me help you. And that's kind of the way this works. But today we're going to be talking about the Rat Rig V Core, which is a 500-500 Core XY linear rail, three triple Z axis, all kinds of craziness this thing is. We've got it a couple of months ago. In fact, it was back in the summer. And it's gone from version 1 to version 1.2, which is what I'm currently running now. And in February, there's going to be a version 3 that's going to have a kinetic kind of bed. And there's all sorts of other stuff and extra, added extras that are going to be into that. So this is the printer I think you should buy. And there's a number of reasons for that, especially if you're an R2 robot builder, because you can get your dome on there, because you can get your body, your legs, the whole kit and caboodle. It's a 500-500. It's actually just slightly over 500-500. And actually, the footprint is slightly smaller than the Creality CR10 S5. And I know it doesn't look it, because obviously you've got this kind of volume square and stuff, but it's phenomenal. And I'm absolutely in love with this printer, and it's using the best quality parts. So if you don't want to listen to me ramble on and you just want to get straight onto the website, check out my links below. Otherwise, hit that subscribe button and let's get straight on into it, shall we? Okay, let's move swiftly on then. So I'm currently printing with my Rat Rig V Core. Uh, as you can see, I'm actually printing a Michael Badley uh, chopper dome. That's one of his small mini little choppers that he's done. Uh, so that's going quite nicely on in the background at the moment and it seems to be flowing incredibly well and you can see everything set up. So at the moment, I'm using Octoprint with this. A lot of the guys in the community, on the Rat Rig community on Facebook, like uh, a thing called Clipper which is basically a user interface that speaks from your Pi directly to um, your SKR board or Duet board or whatever it might be. And I personally couldn't get it to work the way I, want, the way I wanted it to. So I opted for um, a flavor of Marlin, which is version two. And I edited some stuff around that somebody else I've managed to give, give to me. And also John Gowan gave me a little bit of a hand with the uh, BL touch settings and stuff like that. So that's going to be available also down in the description. You'll be able to find that on my GitHub page. So that's printing really nicely at the moment. Again, you know, this 500, 500 printer is using a 240 volt a heated bed it heats incredibly quickly and of course i'm using a 24 volt system bontech extruder bmg m and also the um slice engineering mosquito but well, we'll go through that in a minute so ratrig.com um again links in the description if you do hit my link it means that they know that it's come from me so if you wouldn't mind doing that that would be amazing so the rat rig's background is actually i believe in photography and then it's extended into cnc machines and also 3d printing obviously um so obviously what we're interested in today is going to be uh, 3D printing. And again, you can buy loads of things here. You, if you just want to get some V-slot and do something yourself, there are also some bargains in here, which are, I think they're like H-blocks. There's various bits and pieces that they that they have here, which you know you might want to buy as well. 
might be upgrading another printer who knows but today we're concentrating on 3d printing and as i have already established they do do a cartesian style printer which is this little thing here i'm hoping probably to buy one of these i was waiting for my bqbx uh, which hasn't arrived yet they've got some delays and all that kind of stuff's going on so this is the one that i've got which is the vcore linear rail kit if you click on this right now you're not be able to have too many options at this point mainly because we're getting the stock for the, the version three. So this is this is the new new. We might as well go straight into that. I would also, if you, you know, actually going back to that, if you're a fan of the Cartesian style printer, definitely check this out. You know, I'm hoping also to have some links in the description as well that might give you some discounts and stuff. So, you know, again, I wouldn't go sort of too crazy with this, but they do have a selection of different frames and stuff. And, you know, it's rigid it's going to work really really well and i don't think you're going to have too many issues with uh, setting that up especially if you're a 3d printer user at the moment right so anyway rat rig v core pre-order so the 300 is 499 the 400 is 549 and the 500 is 619 uh, and of course then you've got to add your electronics you've got to add your heated beds or your other bits and pieces uh, your hot ends your extruder your motors your cables all that kind of stuff power supply as well so at the moment the price is 250 euros that's your down payment for whatever you're going to choose to do so it's kind of like a kickstarter thing they've got your money they know that you're interested and they know how many they've got to make and all that kind of stuff so it's it's progressive at the very least um if you then decide to click on there's a couple of things here so if you click on the test configurator now this is the configuration that i would suggest you're going for if you're looking to do big prints and you're, uh, you know, maybe you're doing printing R2s or you're printing larger uh, component parts for droids or whatever it might be. Anything that's of a large scale where you need precision and you need this sucker to work without any failures or certainly minimal failures. This is going to be certainly the uh, configuration that I would suggest. So 500, 500, 500 is where you're going to be at. Add control board. Now, in mind at the moment, I'm using the SKR 1.2 board with six uh, TMC 2209 drivers. That's going to be 121. Now, you don't, all depending on how you want to play this, you don't have to necessarily order all of this stuff. You could just order the bare bones of the printer from, from the RatRig website. If you want it all get it together, just be careful. The only thing that I would say is about tax. So if you're going to get tax of this stuff coming into your, into the, into your country, uh, just be very mindful about that. Now, they are shipping from Portugal. So my stuff turned up within a few days. Don't believe I got hit with tax, but we're not in the European Union anymore. So there's that whole kind of crazy Brexit thing going on. So just be mindful of that. Uh, do you want a genuine E3D hot end? I'm going to say no. Obviously, source that directly from uh, Slice and Bontech and also Jake3D. Thank you very much to those guys. No, don't want. Yeah, I think, you, you know, again, hot end extruder, whatever you want. This is this is the configurator that you can use. And it, again, you don't have to use this stuff. The EVA 2, the EVA 1 allows you to choose your own hot end. You choose your own extruder. So let's go through these options. Do I want printed parts? Yes, you might as well. Do I want these printed parts? No, because I don't know what I want. Do I want stepper motors? No, because if you've already got a 3D printer that you want to upgrade and get rid of the parts or, you know, if you've got a CR10 at the moment and you want to use the motors off of that, as long as they're not too old and decrepit and the machine hasn't just literally been thrown out of a window, I think you may get away with using some of those steppers. It's not advisable. If you can't afford to get those bits and pieces, they're very, well, they're relatively cheap. The 1.8 steppers are relatively cheap, around about £10 or $10 each, uh, depending on what you go for, of course. Do I want cables? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Now, the silicon bed heater, I'm not going to go for on this one because I didn't use this particular one, but the branding on this is actually very, very good. The one I went for was this one, which is the uh, 3D silicon heating pad by Precision Maker. This was a 500-500 for £99.50. It's a 240-volt mat, and you have to have an SSR board to basically regulate the temperature. That plugs basically into your, into your uh, 3D printing board, and it just regulates that whole temperature via the thermistor. Very, really easy to use. And the reason I went with that is because I just wanted something different. I managed to get hold of a couple of these in the end because I'm also going to be doing a um, CR10 upgrade with this particular component that's going to be upgraded as well. So look out for that. Next, what have we got? Uh, magnetic PIE boards. Now, I found that I can get a sheet of uh, mirrored glass for about £15 on that 530 by 530 footprint. So that's what I've done. Do I want this? No, do I want the power supply? Now, the power supply that they supply apparently is pretty good. I'm all about the mean wells now, but certainly since I've been doing the lighting stuff as well, you want a power supply that isn't going to 
short out and cause you tons of problems. So, you know, don't start using the stuff that's unbranded, that hasn't been checked by anybody, that's not CE approved. Use something that's going to be reliable and you may have to spend a little bit of money on that. Or if you're already upgrading your printer, I would seriously suggest you go for a 24 volt system, not the 12 volt system. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that, smaller cables and reliability and all that kind of craziness. But uh, fans are the next thing. And whether or not you decide to go and get a BL Touch, do not hit the add to cart basket at this point because you won't get anywhere with it. If you go up to the top here, you will find that we are at €787.48. Okay, so you are going to need a few more things. After you've got this, again, you can take a step back. You can pretty much do as you please with this. And by that, I mean... If you don't want to have a particular hot end or if you've got a favorite hot end, maybe your favorite is the Hemera by E3D. Maybe it's a Titan. Maybe it's a different. Maybe it's you, you've got one that's in a box somewhere that you haven't used yet. All these things can be used on the EVA system, and we will go through that in a minute. But until then, of course, Slice Engineering, well, they're literally my most favorite hot end. You know, turn your feet into a Ferrari is the, uh, is, the, is the catch word for this. The Copperhead is what I use on my CR10s at the moment. They are phenomenal. I use that with a Bontech DDX. Got two of those. I'm about to upgrade another one as well. Slice Engineering were very, very helpful to start with, and they sent me one of these, and brilliant. And since then, I've got another one. The other thing is this Mosquito. This is what I've got in this new printer. So the Mosquito Magnum Hot End is the one that I've gone through on this particular configuration. The idea of a Core XY printer is precision and speed. So you want to make sure that whatever you're putting in there or extruding out you want to make sure that that's going to come out at the best rate possible. So the hot end that I've gone for on this particular build is the Mosquito Magnum hot end because I wanted to have that precision and speed from the Bontech uh, element, which is the BMGM. It's actually quite a cool hot end. You just got to make sure that you're blowing your uh, cooling parts in, in the right way. You can print this sort of stuff. You get a couple of lollipops in the packet. So that's very nice of the guys down at uh, Slice Engineering. And again, they are such a progressive company. I'm so happy that I've managed to sort of do some work with those guys because they are absolutely epic i don't know if they're shipping to the uk at the moment due to brexit let's actually have a look let's try and do it now um, they have assured me that they are going to get back on track with that and again if you're thinking about buying from them make sure you hit up my links in the description there because there are some savings to be had as well so um, let's just have a quick look and see if they're shipping to the uk they certainly are still shipping to the us because i know of people quite a few people that are receiving their stuff no i don't think it's there at the moment so they're looking to, so I spoke to the CEO from Slice Engineering a couple of weeks ago, and he is looking to resolve this relatively quickly. If you're in the UK or the European Union, I would certainly suggest that maybe you check out Freely Jake. Again, link in the description. There might be some money to be saved on that. Make sure you click the link below. And again, this is going to hit you relatively hard. And we all know we can buy a 3D printer for about £300 that would be relatively good. This is very much about taking that precision to the next level. And again, the stuff that I've printed here, and I have been printing here on my CR10, including this behemoth, droid back here i've had no failures on it oh what's going on with my camera that was really weird ah! oh wow okay let's see if we can back that up i don't even know what's going on anymore okay never mind don't worry okay so as i say the links are all in the description for this stuff anyway again if you want to check out the bontech stuff as well bontech i'm hoping to have those guys one of the one of the ceos on to uh, to talk about some 3d printing stuff so currently on my cr10 s5s i am using the ddx direct drive and it's really really simple you literally just plug it in put your hot ends in, job done. It's very, very simple to use. It's an excellent, excellent extruder. So the Bontech LGX is the next extruder that's going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks. It's super light, super impressive. And again, this is very much about getting that filament out of the nozzle. So making sure the hot end is hot, the cold end is cold, and the feed is good as well. Now, the problem that you generally tend to have is that if you've got a direct drive and you've got to move it around from point to point on the bed, there's going to be a certain amount of weight there. So this is super light, super efficient. And, you know, to be honest, the combo is absolutely phenomenal. So I don't think you're going to have too many issues with that. Make sure you check them out as well. I'll put a link in the description as well. So what have we gone through so far? So we know all about the vCore 3 now. You know where to find that. Slice Engineering, you know where to find that. Bontech, you know where to find that. 3D Jake, you know where to find that. Also, on the Amazon page, you can also pick up this, which is very nice. That's head on back to RatRig. Okay, so we've had a look at this now. We understand what that's all about. Now, there is another page. So again, this does come as a kit. The old stuff now, the V2s and, and that are now discontinued. The Fusion 360 CAD models for the printer 
is readily available. So, you know, this is very much open source. If you want to add something to it, if you want to move it around, if you've got a better idea or a better build, this is essentially where you want to be going. So again, this is a triple Z Core XY printer. This particular one that we're looking at here is the one I mentioned earlier with the little wheels, but I don't think they've sold an awful lot of those because the linear rail uh, version is certainly, in, certainly in my opinion, the better way to go. Um, and obviously that's what they've gone for on, on this new uh, on this new stuff. So let's have a quick look at this. So there is another little link here, which is the vCore free. This will basically show you what this printer is all about. So the difference between my printer right now and the version three printer is basically the kinematic bed and the way that that kind of moves around. There's this kind of bolt onto the back here. And I sort of think that this is maybe something to do with the electronics. So here's a quick video of the version three printing at the moment. That looks like a 300, 300. So that's the smaller version. This three point kinematic bed is uh, is certainly of interest. And you would have seen me uh, play this little video earlier of, of how this works. And, um, you know, when it comes down to bed leveling and things like that, I think it's really going to be quite useful. Um, look at that. Just insane. Absolutely insane. And again, you're using 3D printed parts here, guys. So, you know, this is this is basically where things are going to be going. So you're going to be right at the forefront. And in regards to things like upgrades and things, you know, I've been printing small parts for this that just allow me to have a little bit more bed space as an example ah okay cool so they've got these uh custom toothed idler pulleys as well at the moment on mine there is a uh, it's kind of like a smooth motion so that's good to see as well what have we got here x and y reinforced joints and again this is this is what it's all about you know these guys are really at the forefront of this and i'm so so impressed as well there's no hidden agenda there's no overlords looking at them saying hey you need to sell this many units they're just bringing out awesome products. So I hope they're not going to get swallowed up by a really big company and uh, and lose that kind of focus because, uh, you know, this is this is where the party's at. So, again, you know, as I've said before, we already have these uh, linear rails. And, again, it, the, the smooth motion on this versus those poxy bloody wheels that with the eccentric nuts, none of that anymore, none of that fluff buildup that you always get, none of that wobble that you occasionally get. This is... Uh, you know, this is this is the this is the business. And again, the V Core version three is going to be the 30 series, not the 20 series. And again, finally at the bottom here, it gives you the uh, build volume 500, 500, 500. So you're looking at 710 by 783 by 760. And I, to be honest, I already struggled getting this through a door, so I'm not entirely sure if man 718. I'm going to have to measure that. 718 i'll measure it later but i don't know if 718 is going to get through a door so wherever you're going to put this printer you're going to want to make sure you can get it out if you ever need to full in stop solutions okay so this is the eva 2 so this is awesome by a guy that's within the community called pavel he's done a really really good job at canning this stuff up so again it says there Bowden, bmg titan aero Hemera, and more to come and i know for a fact he's definitely working on the copperhead by slice engineering uh because we had a good conversation around that this is you know use whatever hot end you want use what, whatever you're comfortable with and it doesn't necessarily need to be a budgetary thing if you've had a really really good experience with a certain hot end or certain nozzle it can apply to this and that's that kind of choice hasn't really been there before you know, as a kit, you're making fundamental decisions on how you want to print, which is something that I really, really like. So the good news for me, of course, is there is going to be an upgrade. Uh, here we go. OK, there is going to be an upgrade available for my printer. Uh, what that will look like, I don't know yet, but I'm imagining that it probably had that little bit at the end on there. And it's going to be very much about reprinting these parts here and here uh, in order to make that 3Z work properly. Top lid. And I'm guessing that's going to be to do with filaments that perhaps need a full enclosure i'm sold on this if you're not if you're not excited about this let's have a little look at 
the GitHub page for Pavel. So this is the either 2.1.1 by Pavel. He's done an incredible job at getting this off the ground. And, you know, it's great to see that the companies like RatRig are, you know, working with, with people within this community in order to make their stuff better. So it's absolutely brilliant. And again, there's an upgrade path. It's fully planned. He's done a really, really good job on this. And I'll certainly suggest that you check his GitHub page out as well. Uh, again, link will be in the description. So let's say, for example, I wanted to put a BMG together, right? So the BMG M is basically what I've got for this particular page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this on shape button. Okay, so on shape is basically a CAD package that, again, I've never heard of before. This is all new to me. And it basically shows you the breakdown of each of these individual parts. And what's really nice about RatRig and the EVA 2 is that they've really thought about the end user views something. So although you can't have this in your hand today, you can look at exactly how this all goes together because you can see exactly where you're obviously going to be mounting everything to. You can take out those fans. You can take out those screws. You can remove bits and pieces from this in order to see exactly how this is all going to go together. So you're not going to be missing out on anything here. And you can see where the PTFE tube is. So this is, you know, absolutely brilliant. And again, this is going to be using the, um, that looks like the mosquito in there. Yes, it is. Again, you can move this stuff around. You can put a different hot end in there. There's an E3D going in there, for example. Here we go. There he is. E3D. Job done. That's a V6. There's a dragon hot end. Well, we're not, not a big fan of those dragon hot ends, I'm afraid. But, you know, you can put one of those in if that's your favorite hot end. And yeah, apparently it's in there. Yeah, there you go. You can see it just in there. And again, there's a ton of documentation. There's a ton of information on here. And to be honest, it's just bloody brilliant. It really is. And again, this is a whole package is really impressive to me because I just want stuff that's going to work and that's going to print. And I know 100% that the Bontec stuff works really well with my current printer. I know that the size engineering stuff works with my current printer. The Big Tree Tech SKR boards work with my printer. So really, the Creality printers that I've got already, I've upgraded most of the components inside of it. And to be honest, I guess it's the stepper motors, making the stepper motors silent, then upgrading the hot end, then changing the build plate around. All of a sudden, you're throwing good money after bad. And what's the point in doing that? And I really have this kind of epiphany on why am I spending this kind of money on stuff that is third rate when I can go and buy this kit and it's cool and it looks awesome. And it's different to what everything else is going on out there with these Cartesian printers. And of course, if you're printing big prints, if you're putting two or three kilos onto a print bed, you're going to have those issues with that bed sliding backwards and forwards, at least with this. And the least with the way that this printer works is the Z slowly moves down and the X and Y moves around in the top. So, you know, keep it light, keep it fluid, keep it simple, and obviously keep your cables out of the way. But I'm having a really Let's move on to cost for a minute. Send the wife's out of the room because this is about to get real. We know the rack rig kit is already going to cost you £696.28. pence. You're also going to want a solid state relay, which is going to run the 240 volt or 110 volt bed. You're also going to print a little cover for this because you will get a hell of a shock and you will be jumping up and down. I would love to show you that video, but unfortunately I wasn't recording it at the time. But I did get a nasty belt off of that, so be very, very careful when you're installing this stuff. Because again, we are running at 240 volt here in the UK. So just bear that in mind. Next, we're going to be looking at the bed. We know that's going to be £99.50. I got mine on Amazon. Obviously, RatRig do a, a different one as well. So you can obviously look at uh, whatever you feel is going to be the uh, best route for you. That's the lowest price. That's just for a cable. It's actually going to cost you around about £30-odd pounds for a BL Touch. £28.38 in fact then the big tree tech skr pro 1.2 board you're going to need this motherboard because it drives six of the drivers and the stepper motors uh, and that comes in at 32 pounds 88 so next is the tmc 2226s which are the tmc 22209 upgrades so the latest ones that with a slightly better rms i believe they run up to two amp on a stepper motor and of course we're going to need six of those uh, they've got stall guard, spread cycle, stealth chop, all sorts of other crazy bits and pieces. So we are slowly totting up the uh, values here. 
So meanwhile, power supply is going to come in around about £49.52. You might be able to find this slightly cheaper elsewhere. However, a good quality power supply is definitely the way forward for this type of build. So let's get on to the costly bit, the hot end extruder and nozzle. You are going to be unfortunately looking at around about... Wow, well that makes your eyes water a little bit, doesn't it? Um, look, the bottom line here is that this, this is going to be precision stuff. You don't need to get the top quality stuff in order to get this going. You can just go for a very, very basic setup. But this is the setup that I'm going for. So it's another £311.25. Again, check out my description because there could be some money to be saved, not only on the printer, but as also some of these parts as well. Over on my Instagram channel, I've been asked quite frequently about what screen I'm using to run my Marlin software. Now, this is a TFT screen by Big Tree Tech. I'm using the uh, TFT 70, uh, which runs in around about $61 at the moment. So if you do want to purchase one of those, this is where obviously we're going to buy that. It's a dual display, pretty damn good. The other thing I'm going to mention as well is sometimes you can get like a combo. So if you go for this particular setup, for example, you get the little Wi-Fi thing, you get a USB thing and, and something else I think that turns the printer off. I've bought all this stuff anyway. I haven't fitted it yet and I'll probably end up doing another video around that kind of stuff when it's all installed. But also have a quick look around the site. There's a couple of these different sites at Big Tree Tech and sometimes you can find a bit of a bargain. For instance, you might be able to buy a board with the drivers and uh, you know make sure you're selecting the correct drivers. So the ones you want are going to be the ones that are set for you are. The 2209 drivers, if you know anything about the stepper drivers, they're the uh, ones that became just before the 2226s. And again, they're perfectly adequate. They work exactly the same way. And um, you know there's no real difference other than power. And you're not going to be running that much power other than, well, depending on which stepper motors you're running, of course. So let's get on to stepper motors. My uh, weapon of choice for this is going to be the E3D stepper motors. And if you look at the configs here, it'll give you all the information about how much ampage, how many steps. And I wanted to go for the uh, Super Whopper motors, so I bought those, but unfortunately they don't fit in the slots because they're slightly too long. So I've gone for single compact motor, which is for my uh, extruder. And then I've then gone for five of the high torques. These are 43 mil. So again, we're at another £94.20 to add to the list. So you've got your stepper motors, you've got your big tree tech screen, and you've got your SKR board and its drivers. Getting onto printing's been a slight challenge because when I first started printing, I did start getting some of this kind of weird undulation in the prints, which was mainly down to the stepper motors. So what I've done is I've actually kind of upgraded, downgraded, depending on how you see it, from a 1.8 degree motor down to a 0.9 degree motor. Again, sorry for my camera, it's going all over the place. What that's meant is that actually as prints have gone on, and the tuning has got better and I've adjusted the jerk and all that kind of stuff. The prints are looking absolutely fine and brilliant now. And I'm dead impressed with that. And whoa, that's kind of weird when it does that. Sorry about that. And if you look at some of the prints now, you will see that actually it's it, the, the quality is getting better and better. And as the more I tune on this, the better things are going to be. And that is going to be part of the problems. One of the main challenges you guys are going to have is going to be tuning the printer so i will obviously put all my settings into my github page and also check the links down below for that kind of information but i want to make it as easy for you if you're going to buy this kit and if you're going to look at the stuff that i'm suggesting i want it to make it as easy as possible for you and support you through that whole process as well so the dot bin file is going to be there the compiling software is all going to be there so all you should really need to do is pop it onto an sd card insert it into the main board and then things should touch wood start working now it might be some adjustment on things like stepper motors and wiring configurations and things like that but the bones of it is certainly there for you anyway so let's move on and have a look at some of the prints
All right then, in conclusion, and yes, we are finally heading towards the end of this video. Congratulations if you've made it this far. I wanted to point out a couple of comparisons between the S5 and the V-Core. First, the Core XY works by having the X and Y stepper motors moving the print head in sync. So both motors have to work in order to move the X and Y axis around. So this is where the tuning becomes really important. Usually on a Cartesian or non-Core XY machine, you can tell this by the stepper motors being independent on the X and Y. This diagram shows the setup and as you can see, the stepper belts wrap around the top internal parts of the frame. There are four points on this setup where you can tighten and loosen off the slack on the belt. Thanks again to the Eva extruder holder. These are easy to access on both the front and rear of the mount. Measurements of the belts are important here as will be maintenance of the belts and linear rails. Finally, the Zs all running in sync is ideal. The new bed motion coming out is very, very interesting, but I did have a thought about whipping a belt around the Zs to maintain sync. However, on the V3, you'll not be able to do this due to the way that the bed moves. And hopefully you won't have to. Let's talk about sizes for a minute. My 500 ended up being 70 centimeters by 70 centimeters. The new one, the smallest length will be 72 centimeters. Now this printer may look imposing. However, the S5 takes up 105 centimeters on the Y and 80 on the X with that stupid external box. So ironically, this will take up less space than your S5 swinging its bed around. Food for thought, perhaps. That's it. We are done. There will be more videos coming out over the next couple of weeks. If you're intrigued to find out what's going on with the rat rig and looking at time lapses and things like that, you will find me over on Instagram at the Real Sam Prentice. Links are in the description below. I will be upgrading to the VCore uh, version 3 as soon as the mod comes out for this. I'll then put a video together for that and try and get it on YouTube as quickly as I possibly can. I've got some more projects coming up. I'm currently in the middle of printing this thing with GTEC at the moment, uh, which is another robot, which has got great big tracks on it. It's from the Star Wars franchise, so check that out as well. So the easiest way to find out what's going on is to hit that subscribe button, as you will obviously know, because that's all I talk about. And again, once I get to over a thousand subscribers, I will be giving printers away. So it's kind of worth your while, really, if you want a free printer. Bing. What, what have you got to lose? I'd love to know what you think about this printer. Have I got it right? Have I got it wrong? Please leave some comments below. And I hope you like this printer as much as I do. And we will be seeing you soon. So check out the links below and we will catch you next time. Bye for now.